What's up everyone? Today we are turning 2 plus 1D into uh, 3... Or is it that way? 3D. And what you're about to see was made 100% within After Effects. Play the clip. Pretty cool, right? What you just saw was actually really easy to make. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. Let's get into the video. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a composition, name it hashtag main. I put a hashtag on my main composition because it keeps it at the top of the project panel. I've already set it up, so 1500 by 1500, press okay. Oh, I forgot already. Go back into your composition settings. Within this panel, go to the 3D renderer and change it from classic 3D to cinema 4D. This is the change that will make it possible for us to extrude our shapes. Firstly, make a circle by going to the ellipse tool up here. Click and drag by holding shift and it will make a perfect circle. So you can bring the circle right into the middle by going to the align panel and aligning it horizontally and vertically. And then make the stroke size 50. I'll name the layer circle and make the layer a 3D layer by clicking this icon here. Now let's create the animation. So I'll bring up my rotation properties by pressing R. Click the stopwatch on the X rotation and the Y rotation. Bring the playhead forwards by about two seconds. On the X rotation, change that to 180 degrees and the Y rotation, change that to 360 degrees. And this is what we have. It looks a little bit robotic, so I'm going to easy ease these by dragging over these keyframes and pressing F9. Go into the graph editor, select the first keyframes and drag this out by holding shift. And same with these ones, drag out and hold shift. And now it looks like this. Much better. I'm also going to reverse these keyframes, so copy and paste. The way to reverse them is by right clicking, go to keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframes. And now it goes forwards and backwards. Go to the end of this and press N and now we have a loop. Now for the fun part, go into the drop down menu of the circle, go to geometry options and here we can actually extrude our shape. The further you go, the further the shape's going to extrude. So I'm going to do 50. And so we can actually see what's happening. I'm going to create a few lights. So we can go to layer, new and then light and create an ambient light, press okay. Also go to layer, new light and create a spotlight and press okay. I'll move this to the side a bit and I'll move this back on the Z position. Now if I play through this, we can actually see by extruding it, it's actually extruded the shape. And if we go back to our geometry options, there's a few other things we can do. So we can change the bevel style. We can have angular, concave or convex. Now I'm going to do convex. If I exaggerate this a bit, you can see what it's doing. It's making the, the corners more rounded. I'm going to make it quite subtle and keep it at two. We also need to make sure that the anchor point is actually in the center of the circle. So the way to do this is by go after the animation and on the Y rotation, spin it to 90 degrees. And as you can see, the anchor point is actually at the front of the shape, not in the middle of the shape, which is where we need it to be. So I'll go to the anchor point on the circle. You can press A to bring that up. And on the Z depth, just drag it to the center of the circle. And because we made the extrusion 50, it should be at 25, which is halfway. Delete that keyframe. We can also change the material options. So we go on the drop down menu and go to material options. There's quite a lot of options here. Let's turn cast shadows on. Keep the ambient at 100%. Diffuse, I'm going to make that 100%. Specular intensity, I'm gonna turn this down to 5%. Change the metal from 100% to 50 and keep everything else the same. Now duplicate the circle a load of times by tapping Control D. I'm going to make 10 circles overall. And now bring up the size property by clicking on one layer and shift clicking the last layer. In the search panel, type in size and it brings up the property for all of them. Let's make the first circle 100. Second circle, 250. Then the third circle, 400. Fourth circle, 550. And you see where I'm going from here. So I'll go through all of them and increase the size by 150. And um, because in the end, they've actually overlapped the borders of the composition, I will make the composition slightly bigger. So press Control K and I'm gonna change this to 1700 by 1700. We need to create a camera, so go to layer, new camera, and the focal length we choose will actually change the look of this animation quite a lot. For example, if we make the focal length 200, it'll actually make the whole image look more flat. So this is what that looks like. 
if I delete this camera and create a new one at 20 millimeters, you can see there are no longer any gaps in between the circles. And if I play this, you can see the animation looks as if it's about to hit us in the face. I actually quite like the way this looks, but obviously there's a bit of an issue where it goes outside of the borders again. So we can go back into our composition settings and increase the size yet again. The animation still looks a little bit boring, so the way we can spice this up is by offsetting each of the layers. You can get some plugins to do this, but the way to do this without using any plugins is by dragging the playhead forwards by maybe about two frames, select all of the circle layers and press Alt right square bracket. And this is important because the order of which these are offset is judged by the order of which you select the layers. So select circle one first, and then shift click circle 10. Now they've all been selected in that order. So right click, go to keyframe assistant, and then sequence layers, press okay, and there we go. Obviously now all of these layers are cut off. So select all of them again and drag them out. And we want them to start from the beginning as well. So drag the playhead to the start, select all the layers and press alt left square bracket. And because we've shoved some of these layers forwards quite a bit, select all the layers, press U, and then we just drag the end of our workspace to the last keyframe on the last layer. And make sure all of the layers overlap this workspace, go past the edge of it and press Alt right square bracket. And now all the layers will be showing throughout the entire animation. And this is what that looks like. Really, really cool. I'm going to drag the light backwards a little bit on the Z position just so the circles are more evenly lit and move it to the left slightly on the X position. And now let's change the colors of each of these. I'm going to do these alternating. So I'll select every other circle and then on the stroke color, I'm gonna make it a nice orange. And I actually quite like this blue, so I'll keep that how it is. Let's change the spotlight's intensity as well because I feel like it's a little bit too strong. So by clicking on the spotlight and double tapping A, we can go to the intensity percentage. Let's make it 60%. And this is pretty much it. This is how you can really quickly and easily make a 3D abstract circle animation within After Effects. But we can make this look a little bit better. So I'm gonna add some finishing touches now. The first thing I'm going to do is select everything. I'll pre-comp this by pressing Shift Control C name this circle animation 01, move all attributes. And now we've pre-comped all of the circle animations, we can actually press Control K, go into our composition settings and change the 3D renderer back to classic 3D. And I'm also going to make the dimensions a four by five, 1080 by 1350. And as you can see, the circles are still 3D because within the circle animation, it is still on the Cinema 4D renderer. I can resize this to fit the width of the composition by pressing Shift Control Alt and H. Now let's add a solid and rename that BG for background. Put that behind the circle animation. Select the circle animation, right click, go to layer styles and then inner glow. On the inner glow properties, make the size 45, change the opacity to 30%. Pre-comp the layer again, call it circle animation 02 and move all attributes. Now add a drop shadow, change the opacity to 80%. I'm gonna adjust the distance to around 73 and the softness to 85. Duplicate that, increase the distance more, also increase the softness and reduce the opacity and duplicate that one more time, reduce the opacity, increase the distance again and increase the softness. To create a vignette underneath, press Ctrl Y to bring up a solid, name this vignette, make the color black, and on the ellipse tool, double click and it'll create a circle. In the mask properties, go to subtract, triple tap M to bring up the mask properties and feather it by a lot and expand the mask by around 500 pixels, let's say. Let's create a glow by again, making another solid, selecting a yellow orangish color, press okay, okay again, change the blending mode to screen, turn the opacity down with the ellipse tool, create a circle and press F to bring up the feather properties and feather that and then adjust these anchor points to change the shape of the glow. If you're not happy with the color you've chosen, just click on the solid layer and press Shift Control Y and you can change the color again within there. I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter and press OK. Change the opacity to around 8%. I want to make the background slightly lighter, so I'm going to add a gradient ramp. So I want to keep the original color of the background, so you can go on Shift Control Y and copy the hex code and go up to the effect and paste it there. And again, paste it. I want to make this a radial ramp and let's make one of these colors slightly brighter. And then I'll just change the position to the middle and bring the darker color further out. Now finally, let's add an adjustment layer, put some curves on it and play around with these until you're happy. 
and I will also add the noise HLS auto, change the noise to grain and make the lightness 5% and the saturation 5% also. And while we're at it, let's add a glow. Bring the glow above the drop shadows so it's not affecting the drop shadows. I'll change the threshold to 90%, glow radius to 150 and the glow intensity to 0.6. And as a finishing touch, I've also added a scale animation on the circles. So it starts off big and then it gets smaller and then it goes back to the original position again. Just an extra motion to make the whole thing a little bit more interesting. And there we go, that is the animation completed. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned a few new tips and tricks. If you would like to see more tutorials like this, please subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And as always, I will see you in the next video.